What's going on guys? It's Spaz, your YWC reality check. Tag me in. It is the post-Royal Rumble, I guess the aftermath of Royal Rumble edition of the Raw Super Show, January 30th Raw Super Show review coming your way. We start the show knowing that John Laurinaitis is going to get his performance review from Triple H tonight. He comes out, he's glad handing everybody, he's shaking hands with the crowd, he's shaking hands with all the announcers and Cole's kissing his ass. I really hope you do good tonight, sir, and that... Um, he does come up and he does talk about himself and how he's done a great job with Raw and he starts kissing Triple H's ass, etc, etc, etc. The main thing is John Laurinaitis tonight came out with a hell of a lot of information for us. First of all, he announces the Elimination Chamber match for Raw, which is going to be Punk, Kofi Kingston, Ziggler, Miz, Truth, and Jericho. I'm not going to belabor that too much because I do plan on doing a, another Road Signs episode later this week and it's going to address that a lot. Um... Tonight we're going to have Beth Phoenix versus Eve, Kofi Kingston versus The Miz, Dolph Ziggler versus Orton, and Brian versus Punk. That's a hell of a lineup. Most of you know Dolph Ziggler versus Orton is one of my favorite matches to see. I don't know how many times. I don't care how many times they show it. It's always going to be good. Brian versus Punk is one of those you know internet dream matches, and I'll get into that like I say later on. Punk's music hits before he even gets to the ring. He's doing the na 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 goodbye. Uh, gets the crowd going, gets King to sing with him, gets the ring announcer to sing with him, comes and gets in Laurinaitis' face, and John Laurinaitis says, you owe me an apology because you thought I was going to screw you last night, and I didn't, and I'm a good guy, look at me go. Uh, Punk says, basically, I've come to say goodbye, and thank you for amusing me because you've managed to suck and blow at the same time, which is horrible. John Laurinaitis tries once again for a handshake, and... Um, what does CM Punk say? CM Punk asks him if he's sleepy because the only reason somebody like him would extend a hand to CM Punk is if he wants another go to sleep. They are interrupted by Daniel Bryan. Uh, comes out, says, nobody cares about either one of you two, and no offense to CM Punk, but after after beating Mark Henry in the big show last night at the Rumble, Punk's not much of a challenge. Uh, um, CM Punk might be a good wrestler, but I'm more than a wrestler. I'm a good role model. I'm a vegan. Da -da -da, and he starts pounding home the vegan thing, and I just start shaking my head. Sheamus comes out and legitimately just talks down everybody. Talks down Brian. Doesn't talk down Punk so much, but still, you know, it's like, I could come for you because I've won the Rumble and it means I'm going to WrestleMania and you guys are going into Elimination Chamber and if you win, one of you is going to face me. Da -da 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 -da. Um, and that's about it. <laughs> the segment is great, but it falls kind of flat because Sheamus drops his, you know, his bombs and... Punk and Brian shake hands, sort of unwillingly, and that's the end of the segment. Um, we come back, we have a replay of Barrett and Orton, the backstage brawl they had a couple weeks ago on SmackDown that ended up with Randy Orton at the bottom of the stairs. We then flash up to Wade Barrett in a skybox being <laughs> interviewed by Josh Matthews, and uh, they announced that Orton and Barrett are going to have a street fight on SmackDown this week. So, you know, definitely that's going to keep going. We move on. After the commercial break... We have Orton versus Ziggler, which, as I said, is one of my favorite, you know, combinations to see in the ring. The entire match, the entire match, Wade Barrett is being interviewed by Josh Matthews in his skybox. And not only that, but the guys on commentary, King and, and Lawler, or sorry, King and Cole, are giving Josh Matthews questions to ask. It's a very disjointed version of what happens when, uh, when somebody's a guest... Uh, with them at commentary, it was just very, it was very distracting, and it was very, like, picture in picture, because they were showing Wade Barrett, they didn't need to show him on screen, he was just talking, and that was about it. Um, in the ring, mind you, uh, great even match for the most part, you know, Ziggler does his things, because he's, you know, Ziggler, let's be honest, Ziggler, <laughs> other than not being a world champion, Ziggler's red hot in the WWE right now, and nothing is really going to stop them. The, the more they downplay Vicky Guerrero, the better. They did do a wicked spot right by the right at the uh, corner of the ring that's closest to the announce table where Vicky Guerrero is, where um, Randy Orton sets up Ziggler for a superplex from the second rope, then stares a hole right through Vicky Guerrero, moves him up to the top rope, hits a sweet, sweet looking uh, superplex from the top rope, and like I say, staring a hole through Vicky the whole time, and that just made me laugh because you know Vicky doesn't need to be there. Orton eventually, you know, gets the win, you know, suspension DDT, RKO, and gets the win, and that's lovely and wonderful. We get the, the pop-up reminders of how many days until WrestleMania. For those of you not keeping track and don't have a calculator handy, we have 62 days until the 
grandest stage of them all comes to Miami and such and such. We then recap the Kane Ryder Cena drama from the Rumble. John Laurinaitis is shown walking around the back, glad handing with everybody, including you know texts and and you know visual people and I guess food court people and William Regal and Kurt Hawkins are back there for no particular reason and uh, just keeps kissing everybody's ass, which is basically the theme of the night for him. Next, we have our do daily dose of Funkasaurus as the Funkasaurus takes on Tyler Rex. King has the line of the night so far when he says we have the Funkasaurus versus T-Rex. And it's a dinosaur thing, and da-da-da-da-da, and it's a squash, and Brutus Clay wins, and nobody is surprised by this. Punk and Brian are shown in the back in the locker room. Hey, we're both friends, we're both, you know, underdogs, this and that and the next thing. Punk says, a little piece of advice, nobody really cares about you being a vegan. Brian comes back with, nobody really cares about you being a being a straight edge guy and whatever. And here's the thing that I love about this. Both of them touch on gimmicks that they have sort of really, really gotten into and then sort of pulled away from. Now, I'm going to bring up another name for a second. And this is a thought I had when I was watching Raw because I knew eventually somewhere down the line there would be a comparison like this between the two of them. The third name I'm going to throw in there is Stephen Richards, believe it or not. Stephen Richards was a censor. You know, Daniel Bryan's a vegan and Punk is straight edge. Bottom line... All three of them are telling you not to do stuff. But, you know, everybody loves Punk now. <laughs> everybody loved Brian until he turned heel, but everybody couldn't stand Stephen Richards. And the gimmicks, I don't really know where I'm going with this point. I just need to point it out because the similarities are glaring and they have to be there because, you know, they're rattling around in my head right now. The similarities in all those gimmicks are so similar. It just shows you how much spin WWE puts on things, whether it's an entirely good thing or an entirely bad thing. Whereas all three of them, whether you call them good or bad, are all telling you not to do something that everybody, you know, likes to do. People like to see vulgar television. People like to swear and have sex. And if you're anything like me, you enjoy a good steak. I'm not, you know, endorsing that you go be a pill popper or whatever. But if you want to light up a joint at the end of your day or have a beer or whatever, it's not going to hurt anybody's feelings. So these three guys, if these three guys ever got together on the same team... They would piss off just about everybody. But, you know, Stephen Richard goes went from heel to face. Punk's gone from, you know, face to heel to face. And Daniel Bryan's gone from face to heel. And those, those gimmicks, those ideals, those little bits of character development are there. And um, it's just interesting how a little bit of spin can make that you either the hero of the moment or, like, the, you know, the leper at the end of the line depending on where the story is at that point. And I thought that was a really interesting comparison, and I don't think anybody in their life ever would have compared Stephen Richards to CM Punk or Daniel Bryan, especially here in 2012. But I'm going to get off that. We have Punk and Bryan. Now, needless to say, this is a dream match. And Deluxe Man, I'm looking right at you, bud, because we have your boy, Daniel Bryan, who's awesome, I'll admit, versus the crown jewel of my fave five, CM Punk. Awesome match. Uh, throughout this match, the one thing that was really, really awkward was Cole sort of sitting right on the fence. Because everybody knows, everybody's pointed it out at least once, if Daniel Bryan's turning heel, Cole should have his back. But Cole's still been bashing him, even as a heel, which is awkward in itself. But otherwise, also, it means that King and Booker T, who are supposed to be arguing with Cole, are arguing in favor of Daniel Bryan, who's a heel. So anytime Daniel Bryan's on the screen now, it makes the entire commentator team fall on its ass. More than usual. But, um... Eventually, the match the match gets decent time, and this is, honest to God, Deluxe Man's already said it, and I wholeheartedly agree. This match was the greatest match of 2012 so far. It's only January, but whatever, go with it. Um... This, I didn't want this match to end, and my prayers were answered on more level than one, because for, for seemingly no reason at all, Chris Jericho comes in, tosses Brian out of the way, causes a disqualification, and gives CM Punk the code breaker. So we finally have the beginning of the CM Punk-Chris Jericho story that we've all been salivating for. Not only that, he totally you know, dissolved the existence of Daniel Bryan, and Daniel Bryan managed to squeak out and, you know, do his Art of the Escape bullshit and win another match. So there we go. Lots of different stories being told there. Daniel Bryan, you know, his escaping, his, you know, find a way to escape the match thing continues, and we have the beginning of what will be, or what should be, rather be, the main event of WrestleMania, which is CM Punk versus Chris Jericho. Fuck John Cena. There we go. Um, we have the, the, the announcement that uh, Hall of Fame 
you know, celebrity inductee for this year is going to be Mike Tyson, and we show a big, you know, promo package of what Mike Tyson's done in the boxing world and what he's done in the entertainment world, and finally, you know, WrestleMania 14 when he was right in the thick of the Austin Shawn Michaels thing. Um, I read this earlier today in a spoiler on uh, I think it was No DQ. I'm not sure. So I already knew this. It wasn't a surprise to me. I've had a day to let it sink in. I think I'm okay with it. I'm not a big fan of the uh, of the celebrity wing of the of the Hall of Fame anyway. But that's mostly because of Drew Carey. Um, again, I'm going to get more into this the next time I do a road science episode. So I'm going to leave that alone for now. But Mike Tyson is your third inductee into this year's Hall of Fame. Next, with our truth on commentary, we have Kofi Kingston versus The Miz. Our truth on commentary, just because he's not not only is he nuts, but he makes Lawler and Cole get into nuts conversations with him. Uh, Kofi Kingston and The Miz come out. Miz, you know, cuts a pro, uh, promo on Kofi Kingston briefly, you know. Kofi's getting all the, the credit for doing the handstand at Royal Rumble last year. Meanwhile, or last night, and I came in at number one and got and lasted 45 minutes and lasted through everybody else, and I'm not getting any, you know, praise or anything like that, blah, 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 blah. The match is nothing, and I am sorry to report that Kofi Kingston actually wins this match. Um, okay, we do a little promo for WrestleMania, and then we go from the promo for WrestleMania to the Rock video package that we saw at Royal Rumble last night. Now, again, this is one of those things where I've had a day to think about it type thing. They did uh, a Cena package and a Rock package last night at Mania. Now, I don't care about Cena, but Cena's there. We know what Cena is. We know what Cena does and whatever. I don't as much have a problem with the Rock video package after a day of thinking about it, and I'll tell you why. WWE is, you know, going for the younger audience, going for the kids, etc., etc., etc. So uh, most of the young fans, the John Cena fans, you know, weren't alive <laughs> the last time The Rock wrestled. See what I did there? And uh, so they need, you know, some a point of reference. You know, why is this match so big if they never, if they never saw the Rock in the ring before he left? So I'm getting to be okay with the with the big, you know, gigantic Rock promo, and it's good too. And it has, you know, the fans that are on the pro side of the Rock, fans that are on the pro side of Cena, etc. It's a very, uh, it's a very two sided thing. And I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> there we go. And I'm done. After that, we had Beth and Eve in a 30-second squash match. Beth wins, retains the championship. What I thought was going to happen was Karma, who came back in the Rumble last night, would have come out and, you know, challenged Beth Phoenix. I think that would have been the great logical thing to do. But no, Kane comes out, or he doesn't come out, but we think he's going to come out. And uh, instead he comes out on the Titan Tron and Kane says to Eve, you know, how does it feel to know that John Cena is responsible for what's happening to Zack Ryder and what's going to keep happening to Zack Ryder until Cena embraces the hate and, you know, because Zack's not here, I'm going to use you to send a message to John Cena and this and that. And he appears behind her in the ring, which is great because, you know, Super Cena is going to come in and save the day. And I'm pretty sure John Cena's, you know, incarnation of uh, embracing the hate means him walking down to the ring a little slower and doing a lot of this. A lot of this. This makes me a heel. This is heel John Cena. Um, I'm going to give Cena a few pointers here. Now, if you're going to be heel, don't smile and laugh on your way to the ring. Don't smile and laugh while you're dishing out pain to Kane and making Kane look like a tool. Don't be pandering to the crowd. Don't be making jokes with the crowd. And don't be shouting out, you know, strong, you know, empowering face-like stuff, like, you can come at us a hundred times, and we're gonna come back at you a hundred times. If you get up, we're gonna knock you back down, because you still sound like the same doofus, redneck, you know, Deputy Dewey, Captain America bullshit spewing asshole that we hate you for being. Just putting it out there. You know, I'm, I doubt he'll pick it up, but whatever. Kane eventually escapes Cena, which makes me laugh, and we go to commercial, like, quite suddenly, actually. John Laurinaitis comes out uh, for his review, he says, Look at the great job I've done, look at how much the ratings are up from last year, this and that. I gave myself a self-assessment, and I marked myself 5 out of 5 on everything, whatever. Triple H comes out, tells him he's spineless, he's gutless, he's the worst general manager ever, and he's using his uh, position as raw general manager to make himself a star. Triple H, you know, starts laying into him some more, and, you know, 
Vince let things get in the way of his judgment, I let things get in the way of my judgment, etc., etc., etc. John Laurinaitis starts begging, says, I'll do anything. Triple H laughs. Triple H says, you shouldn't say anything, because anything could be anything. Will you apologize to the entire WWE universe, for example? And he does. He turns to the audience and gives the most lackluster, unheartfelt apology in captivity. <laughs> Nobody accepts it, obviously. Triple H says, I could make you perform in a gauntlet match with everybody that you've ever pissed off. I could invite everybody down here one by one. Do you want that? And Laurinaitis backs up a step. He says, well, you know, I'm not prepared for that, which is lame. And then he says, well, Vince, when he was around, when he was running things, he made people join this certain club. And he, he doesn't say the Kiss My Ass Club because they're PG. But doesn't Laurinaitis, you know, after a minute of thinking about it, get down on his knee, hands and knees, chapstick and all and get ready to kiss Triple H's ass. Triple H laughs at him and calls him a freak and tells him he needs to seek help. And he says to him, "It, you know, with a very, very happy heart, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to wish you ha luck in your future in... And then the lights go out. Undertaker comes down. And I'm thinking, really? Really, we're going to have like an exact duplicate of what happened last year with these guys, and we're going to have the stare down, etc., etc., etc. Because if you remember last year, leading up into last year's WrestleMania event with them, Undertaker made his comeback, and then Triple H cut him off and came down, and they had their stare down, and they pointed at the sign, and that was the big moment, and whatever. But no, see, Laurinaitis, you know, slinks out of the ring and into non existence, so I'm guessing he's technically not fired. Um, Undertaker looks at the sign, looks at Triple H, gives him the old thumb across the throat thing and waits for Triple H to give him a response, but Triple H pats him on the shoulder and walks away. Yeah, so... I'm sure they're going somewhere with this, I'm sure it's going to be good, but that was... A, that was... I can't see why WWE did that. Not not because I don't think it's going to go anywhere, but that was a hell of a way to deflate the Undertaker, the all the excitement built up by WWE's big return. I know uh, Rotisserie Jamie here on YouTube is a big Undertaker fan and marking out like crazy because she thought he was going to come back last night and thought he was going to come back today, etc., etc. She just wanted to see him and whatever, and I'm kind of the same way. I'm a big mark for... I'm a mark for any of the old school guys, really, because there aren't many of them left... Unfortunately, we have to consider John Cena an old-school guy at this point, which is really, really, really gut-wrenchingly, nauseatingly sad. Um, but I'm, I'm a big mark for The Undertaker, no word, no word of a lie. If he decides he's going to retire tomorrow, he doesn't owe us a damn thing, but if he's going to get in the ring and have another match, I'm going to see it. I'm going to see it whether I have to rip it off YouTube, whether I have to download an illegal stream, whether I have to go to a bar, whether I have to order a pay-per-view that costs, you know, ridiculous amounts like they do, or if I have to get into a cab and drive to Miami, I'm going to see Undertaker if he comes back, because now he only wrestles a couple times a year, but this was totally, totally like, here I am, and this is going to be WrestleMania. Well, no, it's not. Um, also, he was clearly, clearly wearing a wig, like, the fact that he was wearing a wig was more obvious than Kane's wig, and that just made me laugh a ton. <laughs> but yeah, that was that, so we were kind of left on a big, exciting uh, uh, moment to end Raw. But other than that, fantastic Raw, fantastic, you know, in, in terms of in-ring work, and, you know, I don't even have much for the scores, fails, and MVPs, because this is just, like, it is what it is. The opening promo with Punk Brian, Sheamus, and John Laurinaitis was a great... I was I was hoping until we had the little thing with Eve and Kane. I was really hoping that this was going to be a Cena-less match. I was hoping they were going to come on some point in the show and say, due to all the injuries sustained by Cena last night, he's not here tonight. He's taking a night off. Whatever. We pretty much had a Cena-less night until near the end, so I was almost happy. But we didn't have Cena opening the show or closing the show, which are the two key things that bother me. Um, like I say, Ziggler versus Orton. Great match. It's a match I'll watch any day of the week. It's a combination of guys that I'll watch any day of the week. It's kind of like an Edge Jeff Hardy. It's kind of like a, well, CM Punk and Daniel Bryan, but I'll get to that in a minute. Um, despite, you know, Barrett doing his thing and, and yeah. You had a situation with Ziggler and Orton where Ziggler has to look psychotic and pissed off and unstoppable going into his rivalry with Barrett. But Ziggler is, like I say, the hottest, like, rising star guy they have on Raw. So neither one of them could really afford to lose. But, um, as has been said by, uh, many, many people here on YouTube, Ziggler looks awesome even when he loses, so he lost. <laughs> Whatever. Punk versus Brian. Another great match. Another great combination of guys that, you know, 
you know, this is one of those internet wet dream matches. <laughs> Um, like I said, while I was watching this match, you know, I was enjoying it so much, I didn't want there to be a winner, I just wanted the match to keep going. We got the next best thing to that with Jericho's interference. You know, Jericho interferes, uh, Punk didn't technically lose, Brian gets to say that he won and go back over to SmackDown and say that he's the better champion. And we've started off the Jericho-Punk, you know, road to WrestleMania cliche. Um, Punk-Jericho at Mania, it's gonna happen one way or another, um... Elimination Chamber is, you know, it is what it is. There's no way Sheamus is going for the Raw title because Sheamus has made a home on SmackDown. Um, Sheamus versus Brian or Sheamus versus, you know, whoever. It's going to happen. It's going to unfold as it will. Here's a thought, though. They have announced that both of the Elimination Chamber matches are going to be title matches. Now, that leaves one brand, which I'm assuming is going to be Raw, without a you know, decided number one contender. So I'd like to know, between Elimination Chamber and Royal and WrestleMania, how are they going to establish a number one contender in such a way that it seems important on a house, or on a weekly TV show? Because establishing a number one contender at a pay-per-view is awesome. That's why I like the Elimination Chamber, because usually it's the number one contender for one title and the other chamber is for the title. So everything is set going into Mania. So we're going to have one missing piece of the puzzle. We know it's going to be Jericho, but how are they going to get him to that spot? Is, is what I'd like to know. So I'm on the fence about that right now. Fails. <laughs> Ziggler's vest that he wore last night and he wore tonight. Why does he have a vest covered in feathers? He's not, you know, Hogan or Flair or any of those. He doesn't need to be wearing feathers. That's, that's my point on that. Him wearing feathers is kind of like Zack Ryder having the Blackberry barcode on his crotch of his tights. It's just, it's just wrong. Just stop it. I said it before and I'll say it again, the Wade Barrett interview during the Orton-Ziggler match, um, if it was just voiced over I could have dealt with it, but the fact that it was split screen most of the time between the match and the interview with Wade that was entirely unnecessary was incredibly distracting and incredibly, you know, inconvenient, especially for two guys in the ring that are great. If it was Orton going up against some jobber and I didn't care, I, it wouldn't bother me nearly as much, but Orton and Ziggler put on a great match that deserved more attention than it got. Um, a little bit of a personal thing, but Kofi beats The Miz, really? Just saying. This is the guy that main evented WrestleMania last year, and now he's, you know, losing to a guy who's only a singles wrestler now because his partner is on drugs. Putting it out there. Not bashing Evan Bourne, but I'm just laying the laying the facts out on the table so the WWE can see them. Why Kofi Kingston is in the Elimination Chamber boggles my mind. Um, Cena fails at life. Cena fails at being a heel, like, hard. He still looks like he's having way too much fun. And, and he needs to stop. He needs to go away. He needs to get, like, kayfabed an injury, like, a day before WrestleMania so that Randy Orton has to take his spot against The Rock. I would mark out ridiculously for that. Uh, the Diva Squash match. The only reason the Diva Squash match makes sense is because of what Kane did with Eve afterwards. The only other way a Diva Squash match makes any sense at all would be if they were bringing in Karma. But here's a funny thought, and this is what I've been joking around with Twitter all day. What if, right after getting plowed by the big show, what if Karma's first rival in this comeback, in her WWE comeback, is the 95 pound AJ Lee? How ridiculous would that be oh yes uh triple h declines the challenge from undertaker yeah don't know what to do with that just yet uh lots and lots of rumors and speculation and whatever that these guys are going to have a last man standing match at wrestlemania this year yet now yes it wouldn't be my first choice for a com uh, competitor for the undertaker for the streak at wrestlemania Yes, it would be Triple H Taker 3, which I'm not a fan of either, because, you know, other people are there that could have a shot and would be awesome. Um, but if they were doing it a last man standing match, I could deal with that. Last man standing could be good. Last man standing makes sense if it's Undertaker's last match. Now, I'm not wishing Undertaker away. I don't want it to be his last match, but, you know... If it is what it is, then, like I said before, it's like it's the same thing that I say about Rey Mysterio all the time, that people just don't seem to understand from me. It's like, I don't want them to go away, but if they decide to go away, they don't owe us anything. Um, if he hadn't won the Royal Rumble, honest to God, I would love to see Undertaker versus Sheamus at WrestleMania. 
But that's not going to happen because Sheamus is obviously going for a title now, unless Undertaker gets a title before WrestleMania, which would be awkward. MVP of tonight will be Brian. Brian Sean up against uh, Punk, which I knew he would, but he surprised even me. So I'll, I'll give it to him, and I'm sure, Alex, that'll make you happy. Um, Punk and Jericho will probably get a lot of my MVP statuses between now and WrestleMania, so I can give one to Brian, I guess. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, the Fave 5. Orton won his match against Ziggler, which was awesome. Great match entirely. Like, neither one of them has anything to be ashamed about, so Ziggler lost, amazingly, <laughs> to Randy Orton. Miz has obviously pissed in somebody's cornflakes in the WWE corporate office because he just lost to Kofi Kingston. Rhodes doesn't show up very often on the Raw Super Show, unfortunately, because I would love to see Rhodes come in and tangle with some of the guys on Raw. And Punk technically lost his match to Brian, but he's going into a rivalry with Jericho, which will not hurt my feelings in the slightest. That is about it. I have waffled on for quite a, a long time, and it's been quite enough, I am sure. I've been Spaz, your YWC reality check. Subscribe up there, talk down there, start a conversation, keep that conversation going. Don't be a stranger. I will talk to all you guys later, and I am tagging out. Bye. Get up, come on, get up.